What's up boys and gals and welcome to part 2 of my Black Desert boss guide. In this video, I'll be going over the tactics for Nuvra, Beg, Mudster and Karanda. If you need more information on the other bosses, then I suggest heading over to the part 1 of my boss guide video. The first boss I'm going to be covering in today's video is Nuvra, and this boss is located in the Valencian Desert. He's a bit trickier to find than the other bosses because you can't use your map in the desert unless you have a compass, but you don't really need one to find him. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have purified water and star anise tea. This will negate the effects of dehydration and hypothermia, which are debuffs that you get when you are in the desert. 20 of each of these should be enough. These are easily purchasable from the marketplace, so don't worry about crafting them yourself. You can also now buy them from the general goods vendor in San Grain Bazaar. Nuva drops the Nuva offhand, which is basically the highest AP offhand weapon in the game. This is great for some classes, but then it's not great for most of us, especially on EU with the current evasion meta. So check out some of the forums and stuff to see if this is worth it for your class. So like all bosses in this game, Nuva is pretty easy once you get to know his abilities, but holy shit is this boss annoying. He has a sidestep or hop ability, which he'll use to jump away from you. And whilst this happens, you may find that he sometimes disappears in front of you and then appears right behind you somehow. I'm not really sure what happens with this boss. It's not a major issue, it's just a bit annoying. His next ability is his oh so fun whirlwinds. Nuva will spawn multiple whirlwinds which slowly move around the boss's location. If you get stuck in these, it's very hard to move out of them and it can make you an easy target for Nuva. The whirlwinds don't do that much damage themselves, but just try and stay away from them. But this can sometimes be difficult as they're incredibly hard to see at night time. After he's done impersonating a rabbit and calling down the wrath of the wind gods, he might do his next ability which involves him flying into the air. Not really much you can do here, just stand still and try to avoid his fireballs, but they don't do much damage anyway, so you don't really need to worry about that. The main ability that you need to look out for is his frontal fire breath. He does this throughout the fight and at random intervals. This is Nuvra's only one shot ability and it's very simple to avoid. Just stand behind the boss or in the side of him, just like every dragon in every MMO ever created. He does however also have a tail whip so it's much easier just to stand in the side of him. In order to get knowledge on Nuvra, you need to complete a short quest chain that starts off in the Ibalab Oasis or however you pronounce it, which is located in the north of the Valencian Desert. Once you're there, you can pick up a quest from the stable keeper who will ask you to find a book in the nearby desert. You'll need to do this three times and after you've done that, you'll receive knowledge for Nuva. The books are fairly easy to find as they're shown on the map and when you're near, they appear on your mini map. So if you're not happy with your knowledge, you can also reset it at Calfion or with an elixir of oblivion and then speak to the stable keeper again, spend some energy and try out for a better rank. But I personally never bothered with that myself. That's pretty much all there is to know about Nuva. As long as you really avoid his fire breath, you should be okay fighting him. So just remember to stay in the side of him and watch out. Let's move on to talking about Mudster. This boss is located south of Heidel and east of the central guard camp. He can drop your usual Lavertos and Awakening boxes, but he also has a chance to drop Mark of Shadows. Whilst this isn't the best piece of gear or a boss item, it's still worth a nice 7 to 10 million. He's a very easy boss, as there's really only one ability that you need to pay attention to, and that is the ability that for some reason my guild have named the Chicken Dance. The boss will do this animation where he rolls his shoulders back and forward and then burrows underground. As he does this, you'll need to run away from him as he begins to shoot spikes up from under the ground once he has burrowed. If you're not very well geared, this can easily one-shot you, so be sure to run out as soon as possible. If you are well geared, you can probably just block through it if you're a class with that or iframe away from it. His other abilities include him spawning multiple adds from himself. These are just mini monsters. They don't really do much damage and they just get AoE'd down by everyone. Sometimes he'll also borrow underground and charge towards a player and then pop up in front of them. Just move out of his path and you'll be fine. So that is really all you need to know about Mudster. Just avoid his chicken dance spikes of death and you'll be fine. Next up is a boss called Dastard Beg. This guy spawns in the northern plains of Serendia, which is located west of Heidel. This is one of the bosses that a lot of people do because he drops the boss gear Beg Gloves. These give bonus accuracy as you enhance them, has two gem slots and slightly higher DP than most other gloves. Beg really only has one main ability for you to look out for just like most other bosses, and that's his chain flail or spin. 
he will stop auto attacking and do a roar. Once his animation is complete, he will start spinning his chain around him, doing massive damage to anyone near him. This ability hits in 360 degrees around him, so just run as far away from him as possible and go back in once he stops doing that ability. If Beg resets or is engaged on, he will also do this ability, so it's best to stay clear of him on pull. His main auto attack is him lashing his chain at the person with aggro. This is an AOE ability, so try to stay behind Beg or at least take note of who he's attacking so that you don't stack on them and get knocked down from his auto attack. But it's worth bearing in mind that Beg does change who he's attacking a lot, so just try and spread out as much as you can. In order to obtain knowledge from this boss, you're going to need to do the daily boss scrolls from Beg, which you get from your Black Spirit after level 45. Just try and get the last hit on the boss as this will help secure the knowledge faster. So, that's pretty much all there is to know about Beg. We left the best until last. The boss which drops the best awakening weapon in the game. The boss which has lost me more XP than I'd like to think about. And the boss who has reduced your FPS to less than 5. Yes, you guessed it, it's Karanda. Karanda is a harpy boss which is located in the mountains just southwest of Florin. She drops the best awakening weapon in the game called the Dandelion. This weapon has more AP than any other awakening weapon, but it is very rare, which is why so many people are doing this boss because they're still trying to get that awakening weapon to this day. Karanda has two main abilities that you really need to watch out for or you'll get one shot, and those are the raining arrows or spikes or feathers or whatever they're called of death. There are two different types of this ability, one in which you need to stay in and hug the boss, and another one where you need to run away from the boss as fast as possible. And luckily, there are a couple of ways to tell which one you need to do. In BDO, they've recently released boss ability indicators, so when Karanda goes to do her spikes of doom, you can just run out of the red ring to safety. But this won't always give you enough time, so it's best to see which animation the boss is doing to save yourself. Before Karanda does her spikes, she will shoot into the sky. If she very quickly dashes up into the sky, you must stay in and not move out, as this means that the AoE is going to be on the outer ring of the fight zone. But if she lowers herself onto the ground and then shoots off into the air, that means that you need to run out as far as possible. Once you recognise both of these animations, the boss actually becomes very easy. The simple way to look at it is if she goes up into the air very quickly, then you stay in. But if you see the animation of her going down and taking a bit more time to shoot up into the air, then that's when you have to start running out. Her other abilities that she has is obviously her auto attack. And the other main thing she does is she will swoop into the air and summon multiple harpies to fight for her. Now, these mobs aren't particularly strong, but when there's only a few of you doing Karanda at the start, if the harpies all gang up on you, you will die. So just keep that in mind when you're AoEing. You probably don't want to aggro all of them to yourself as you're going to have a hard time. So just be a bit mindful of that. That's pretty much all there is with Karanda. As you can see, most bosses of BDO have one or two important mechanics that you need to watch out for. And once you've mastered those, then the bosses really become easy and they can become a nice way to make money through gems, Leverto weapons, boss armor, and all the other cool things you can get from them. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments section. I'll try and answer as many as I can, or I'm sure other people that watch this video will be able to help you out as well. And if you've enjoyed it, obviously drop a like and subscribe. And I'm hoping to get back to making more videos, but I've said this in the past. So I'm just going to try and get them out when I get the chance, guys. I'm sorry this one took so long. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Peace out.